American cities. Big, bigger, biggest. Where once there were fields, steel and concrete instead of trees. Okay, great. But without trees, cities trap heat, causing heat islands and poor air quality. That means health problems, including higher asthma rates. And water runs off asphalt streets, causing flooding and pollution in our waterways. Throughout the world, a city's infrastructure affects the health and the livelihoods of everyone who lives in and around them. By 2050, 70% of the world's population is expected to live in urban environments. Will our future look like this or like this? Khalil Kettering, the Nature Conservancy's Urban Conservation Director in Washington, D.C., is working to make cities more sustainable. A city is like an ecosystem. All roads, buildings, sidewalks interface not only with each other, but with nature in and around the city. You're my friend Jerome. Jerome is an intern with the Nature Conservancy, and he's also a spoken word artist. Just hear me. Don't fear me. Embrace me in this process. We know without struggle, there is no progress. Today, Khalil is showing Jerome the journey of water in cities. Every time you turn on the faucet, take a shower, flush the toilet, that water goes into the sewers. When it rains, what usually happens is all this water hits the concrete, picking up trash, pollution, and flowing straight into our sewers, taking everything with it. Cities began to build underground sewers over 100 years ago. We've been trying to figure out how to deal with waste and pollution for a very long time. When you first go down there, it smells bad. You never think about where it all goes when you wash the dishes. Khalil and Jerome are in a combined sewer overflow, which means that during heavy rains, the stormwater combines with sewage. That sewage mixed with the rainwater goes directly into the river. And you can imagine the impact of the rainwater carrying the pollution mixed with what's coming out of your toilet and what that does to the river. Scientists like Masaya Maeda at the Anacostia Watershed Society in Washington, D.C. partner with the Nature Conservancy to measure the level of dangerous pollutants in the water. This helps us understand what's happening with water in our cities. For years, you could go to the river and you could see car tires, you could see appliances, freezers, fridges, all littered within the river. And a lot of people live along that river and eat that fish from that river. We say, don't eat fish from this river. It's not recommended. It's sad to see such a great body of water and then not be able to enjoy it. How are we going to fix this? We have some solutions to help deal with this stormwater issue. To find those solutions, we first have to understand the way water works on a city street. When you have a piece of concrete or asphalt, like this core from a New York City street, you can see that the surface doesn't absorb water. That's the water that runs off and ends up in a sewer and in the river. But if you pour water on a natural area, like this plant, that water is filtered as it goes into the ground. The water nourishes the plants, which release oxygen into the air and provide shade, improving air quality and lowering temperatures. You can design your city so that the rainwater that hits your roads is then directed into gardens, is then directed into wetlands. Those areas are planted with trees, with vegetation that absorbs the water, that cleans the water, before that water then slowly flows back into the river the way it used to, before all those roads were built up. There are environmental design companies that build infrastructure projects redefining how nature and cities interact. We were hired by the Anacostia Watershed Society to repair the channel immediately downstream of the stormwater outfall. This little outfall was contributing a lot of sediment to the Anacostia River. You know, every time it rained, soil was just sloughing in. We filled in that whole gully with probably eight to 10 feet of sand. And then we put a few giant boulders, some are probably six to eight feet in diameter. 
It's a practice that mimics an upland forest. If we can integrate natural systems within urban systems, you might be able to control, say, urban heat islands. Urban design would mimic an ecosystem, and it's capable of processing all the materials that are within the system. Cities are making big changes to approach the problems posed by stormwater and sewage with solutions based on nature. Washington, D.C.'s new Poop to Power plant turns sewage directly into electricity, which helps power the city's electricity grid. The byproduct of the treated sewage can be used like compost to fertilize landscaping, maybe even more rain gardens. Just like people, cities can grow and evolve to deal with new information, pressures, and problems, like climate change. Right now, we have a chance to rethink and redesign the way our cities work. In 50 years, I envision cities looking completely different than they do now, transforming, where every resident is a five to 10 minute walk from being in nature. Everybody can swim and fish in an Anacostia River. I have confidence that this vision will be true because there's more and more young people getting involved because this is their future. This is the world that we're leaving for them. Cleveland inspired me to learn more about sustainable urban design. Like more people are catching on to it and it's sort of snowballing. It's just becoming a community of people working toward building greener urban environments. Don't get too overwhelmed. Let's just build a rain garden. A rain garden traps rainwater with its dirt and its sediment. I bet you're wondering why I do it. What's the benefit? Stormwater can pollute our rivers. It'll settle in unless the gardens can absorb it. That's the betterment. The core of this is clear, though there's much more you can get into. But rain gardens save our waters. It's that simple. Help nature, help itself, keep the rivers and the streams in order. Because I don't think anyone just loves dirty water. Seeing Jerome learning about protecting nature in cities and get motivated about it is what makes it all worth it for me. It is what makes me passionate about the work that I do because I know we're creating another advocate. There's something that can be done. We can do this. I can be a better steward to the land that we're on and then apply that idea to everybody. Then what would the world look like?